but our dog, uh, we think he must have gotten a hold of something, maybe eaten like something from a plant at a family party we had for Easter. So the next day he was sick as a dog. And um, on Tuesday, we actually ended up taking him to the vet and he's much better now. But that's how the week started. And then, you know, we got into Wednesday and I started thinking about this gate that I've been wanting to put up in my backyard so that my dog can roam the backyard and let him out there and go pee. So I don't have to take him out on a freaking leash every time he wants to go out because he's a husky and he loves it when it's cold. Yeah. (laughs) And it sucks to have to stand out there in the cold with him. He doesn't like it. I don't like it. No good. But that's what I spent the rest of my week doing, putting together this gate that spans across my driveway. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I'm incredibly proud of the work. I've never done any kind of carpentry or anything like that. So I didn't expect it to come out as well as it did. And hopefully tomorrow (laughs) it's still standing. (laughs) Did you just kind of like throw it together? You're like, I'm just going to buy the stuff. I think I know what I need and just throw it together. Or did you like use a YouTube tutorial? I I use. So like the only thing I, I. learned from a YouTube tutorial that I wasn't going to do what I hadn't already been thinking about was the way I I joined each one of the wood boards on the frame. Like I cut off uh, half the width of the two by four so that they would fit together at nice Nice. 90 degree angles. You know, uh, most uh, other than that, it was mostly just wing it. So did you, you built the gate yourself out of two by fours, out of two by fours, sunk a couple of uh, six foot posts, a couple down a couple feet into the ground. So hopefully those aren't going to be moving anywhere. And yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of manual labor have the blisters to show for it too. That's cool. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And it keeps your dog in the backyard. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Oh yeah. In it. And it serves for a good place to stand in front of and drink beer and and drink beers with the boys. That's right. (laughs) But you can't go past. Don't go in my backyard. <laughs> Everyone's welcome in my backyard. Right. Do you, cool. do you want us later. to stand on the inside of the gate or on the outside of the gate? Oh, God. I haven't really or thought that deep gate. into it yet. We just stand on the gate. Uh, do you want us to might, be... I don't trust my carpentry that much, and you shouldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> so no fence sitting here. No, no fence sitting. <laughs> okay. Mine so, either. It'd be uncomfortable. I have a uh, a Jeopardy style question about Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. So it'll be you need to answer it in style. Okay. In the form of a question. Okay. Uh, this actor, known for his um, work in Jurassic Park, played actor Odin in that same scene with Matt Damon. Uh, the third. Who is? Sam Neill. Yeah. I think we found our new Jeopardy host. <laughs> no. No. I can't even get on the show. I've tried. Did you? Yeah, I've, I've taken the Jeopardy test. Sam Neill's a great actor, by the way. Yeah, but he plays Odin. Yeah. And apparently he will return in Thor Love and Thunder. I can't wait. Christian Bale playing Boar. The god, or not Boar. Yeah, Boar, the god killer. Whoa. No, not Boar. <laughs> yeah, Boar. Gore, the god killer. Not Boar. No, Gore. Korg. Gore. The rock Gore. guy. Gore. Played by Taika Waititi. Played by Christian Bale. Yeah, I was talking about Gore. We're, we're half a Marvel yeah. podcast, by the way. Just so you know. I, no, no. Just, the episodes I've heard, there's been a lot of Marvel talk, and I was a little <laughs> nervous about that because I have zero to contribute when it okay. comes to Marvel. Sorry. Like, I, I think the last one I watched were any of those, some of the Iron Man movies, like the first three. <laughs> That's, are there more Iron Mans, or do they all turn it? three. There's three, and, yeah. and then they stop doing those, but they have, you know. Yeah, uh, there's other ones. Yeah, yeah. That Iron Man is in. Yes. But he's not the feature. Like No. Yeah. I mean, he kind of is, but it's not. It's always a Tony Stark show. Yeah. It makes sense as to what I was saying before, because obviously those first three Iron Man were like pre-2000. I don't know when the third one came out, but... 2014? Wow. A little overlap there. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. Honestly. I must have felt like I needed to uh, keep up with the series and then given up. That was a good try. Yeah. I made a, I made a deal with my kid. If I watched all the Avengers movies, she'd watch all the Star Wars movies. Let's just say only one of us is good at holding up our end of the deal. Oh. Uh, <sighs> but did you enjoy it? <laughs> they were all right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I've watched the Star Wars movies without her. <laughs> Since? <laughs> yeah. Could, well, sh- she kept falling asleep, and I wanted to watch them anyways. So, how can you fall asleep to Star Wars? I don't know. Actually, I haven't watched them all. I got uh, the the final movies, the newest ones. I haven't watched them yet. I did fall asleep. Well, I was. I think it was a midnight showing of episode seven, 
And I think I fell asleep during that. Okay. But I was really tired. But it, it was midnight and yeah. we're, we're getting old now. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you watched more of the Marvel Cinematic Universe than a lot of Marvel Cinematic Universe fans, too. Whoa. You watched The Runaways. Yeah. And uh, you watched Cloak and Dagger, too, didn't you? Yep. I think that Cloak and Dagger was maybe one of the best TV shows I've ever watched. Yeah. I only watched season one, but it was really good. It was very good. So. Lost. It's okay. Are they, are they on Netflix? They're on Hulu. Hulu. Yeah, okay. Hulu. All right. I guess I'll watch yeah, those. Cloak and Dagger um, was a Hulu original. Um, and it's Runaways about- was an ABC... Or, no, Runaways was a Hulu original as well, too. They're both kind of like campy, That's young right, no. adult superhero series. Yeah. Um, and they kind of have a crossover. That's why it was a big deal to watch them both. Yeah. Um, Runaways was a Hulu original. Um, Cloak and Dagger was Freeform. Yeah. And Cloak and Dagger was a little dark and deep and mm-hmm. it was good. I, I went into it, you know, my daughter is like, hey, we got to watch this movie because I love Marvel. Or we got to watch this show because I love Marvel. It's really good. And then by the time it was over, I was like, mm, they should make another season. And they're not going to. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. A lot of Marvel fans, they just watch the movies and they're like, oh, that was good. I'm good with that. Now, I don't entirely understand how they tie together into the rest of the Marvel Universe, but... Those ones are just sort of the reference that take place in the same universe. So it's, you know, okay, we acknowledge that there's superhumans in the world. That's about it. Hmm. You'd think some of the stuff they were up to, freaking Iron Man would get involved with. But whatever. <laughs> Tony Stark's too important to help these kids. Yeah, you can only fucking follow rockets into, or send rockets into space. And Fucker. Through portals. Bob, what'd you do this week? Oh, not much. Not Did much. much. Got complimented by Casey on my uh on your left. <clears throat> more my right. Uh you know, for how long your left is good too, Bob. Thanks. I think it looks very nice. Thanks. For how long I've been or how short I've been doing the uh boxing thing. Mm-hmm. He said I'm picking it up quick. Oh yeah. That looks like a lot of fun. I've been I've been seeing a lot of my friends who getting into that, like between you and Casey and then uh, Mike Gibson. And, and I mean, if you like, like if you like punching things, <laughs> it's fun and it, it's good. Uh, good cardio for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it's a good workout. Yeah, for sure. And it surprises you when you don't think you can do something, and just how how good it feels when you do get it. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, and Zach tried to convince me on Friday that I should join. I don't like punching things. You could. It doesn't feel like my. Doesn't feel doesn't feel like my uh, my bag, baby. Well, good. You guys do your thing. All right, I'm proud of you guys for <laughs> doing right. your shit. It's not my thing. So, how many things did you punch this week, Bob? <laughs> how many different? Is it like the same thing many times? It's the same thing many times. Yeah. A couple, you, couple mitted hands, right? I don't just go punching walls now. What? Can this wall? Can this wall stay in my power? <laughs> so, if you had to guess, like how many punches have you punched? Oh, shit, accurately estimate. At least six hundred. At least, nice. probably six hundred punches. That sounds like a perfect score to me. <laughs> a week, yeah. God damn it, we're doing perfect score. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, Courtney and I went to a melt yesterday. A melt? Oh, a melt? Yeah. Which one? Which one? You get? The the Avon. Avon. Which one? I, Avon. Avon. Okay. What you get? Yeah. What you get? What you get? Uh, the big popper. We both did. Oh, look at you guys! Did you guys add chicken to it? No. Yo, is it good with chicken? Oh yeah. You just say I'd like the big popper. Add chicken. Yes. What kind of chicken is it? Grilled chicken. Ask for grilled chicken, not fried chicken, because then you have like fried in fried, and it's just too much. Is there such a thing as too much fried? Yeah. Yeah. When you have something fried inside of something else that's fried, it just becomes too much. I think you have to show me to prove it. I- <laughs> we'll have to melt. Order a big popper. <laughs> we'll have to order one of each, half of each. Yes. And- we'll order. Yeah. There you go. And then quarter and then half those. And then you get, yeah. you each get a half a sandwich. I actually, when I was working at Melt, I had people, I'd have like a table come in. They're like, I don't know how we're going to do this. And I was like, how about each of you order a full sandwich, 
cut each half in half again, and then you each get to try four sandwiches. Yeah. It's the way to do it. Done. It's like it's like uh, tapas, but with melt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That's not a bad idea. Oh, yeah. Melt tapas. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, call what's his name? Matt Fish. Call I, Matt I don't Fish. Know. Call, call Matt and let him know that you have a winning idea. That was tapas. your winning idea. <laughs> it, it is. It is. But I'm giving it to you. <laughs> My friend. <laughs> he has a winning idea, but he wanted me to convey it to you. That sound you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> sound you're looking for. Melt tapas, baby. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Oh, no. You know what I'm really excited about? Huh? The fact that they brought back the corny beast. It's a it's two jumbo all beef hot dogs. American oh, cheese, okay, yeah. On bread in a cornbread batter. Oh. Uh, it used the to be bun, on a stick. Is the bun inside the cornbread batter? Like did you bread? say did you say it was in a bun? No, it's on bread. Oh, okay, bread. Yeah, okay. just like the normal bread. But battered. But then it's in, like like the big popper they do use just their regular batter. Okay. But they have a cornbread batter. Ooh. So it's a giant corn dog. And it's so good with some stadium mustard. What was this again? What, what? It's the Corny Beast. The Corny Beast. I've, I've never they tried that used one. used to only do it when the Indians would make it the playoffs. Okay. But they released it as they're doing like, instead of monthly sandwiches, they're doing seasonal sandwiches. Okay. So for summer, they've got it. Okay. So I'm well, really excited to go try it again. I, I it Melt is walking distance from my house. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going. I'm going to try that. That's yeah, going to be my next sandwich. It's so good. <laughs> and it's literally, it's just a giant fucking corn dog. And it's so good. Oh. How many, oh. how many inches? So I guess that it really is a boneless corn dog. <sighs> wow. I think it has a bone. <laughs> I think they put a bone on it. <laughs> a boneless corn dog. <laughs> <laughs> Things are well, really uh, technically the there, huh? technically the bread is the bone. Right? I thought the stick was the bone. Yeah, the stick's the bone. The stick's so you're definitely telling me the they bone. put a stick in this sandwich just for good measure. At one point, I guess they did put a stick as the bone. Cube roll. What is this sandwich? Because the structural starch is the bread. But I think the breading could be too. But the breading could be. The breading holds the bread together. <laughs> Have I you mean, ever this heard could of the cube be rule a, when it comes to food. No, it's the cube rule. Well, it gets brought up like every other episode, so I'm surprised we don't have it memorized. Welcome, Steve's welcome it up right now. Welcome to the cube cor- corner of the cube. Uh, cube <laughs> corner, corner. Of the cube. Um, it involves the location of the structural starch um, of any food um, to determine what type of food <laughs> it is. The location, so like the outside. Specifically, a corn dog is considered a calzone. Okay, really? So I think it would fall into that yeah. category. Wait, we have. I didn't yeah, know this just, was uh, a thing. I'm. This sounds like it's something I'm going to have to study. Is there going to be a test? There, there's not. Oh. We just. I'm a little disappointed. Well, <laughs> well maybe, no. Maybe now, next time you come on the podcast, we'll have a test for you. Here's okay. What, here's what we'll do. We'll have. We'll have the. Uh, we'll have the Marvel trivia corner. Yeah. And then we'll have the cube corner. So it started out as, got two as the question of, is a hot dog a sandwich? Corner pocket. Yeah. We're almost at a Tesseract. And then we can we can extract the an infinity stone from it. Yes. So so how where do where do you land on is a hot dog a sandwich? Because personally I would always I always considered it a type of sandwich. It's but a taco. It would be a taco. It's a taco. It's got three, three sides. Three sided. I I reject this. <laughs> I will memorize your rules, but I reject them. <laughs> There's but a whole website. A sandwich in a bun would also be a taco. So if a, a sandwich to be a, to define a sandwich, it would have to have bread on the bottom and top. So so all hoagie subs. Like a quesadilla. Yes. A quesadilla counts. As all hoagies and subs are considered tacos also? Yes, indeed. I strongly reject this. <laughs> I soundly reject this, although I, I don't have a reason for it, so you, I guess I'm wrong. If you separate <laughs> the top from the bottom, if you separate the top from the bottom, it's a sandwich. So like when it accidentally splits, when you're eating a hot dog and the bottom accidentally yeah, splits, it, it accidentally becomes a sandwich. Becomes a sandwich. All right. No, I, you know oh, what? Man. It's fun and, and educational. I'm so glad to be here. There's, also, a, there's, a, favorite. there's a supernatural element to it. It's, it's uh, they can, the, the cube rule acknowledges shape shifting. Yes. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> well, you also have such examples as a Big Mac, which actually a, counts as a cake. Is because there's multiple layers, <laughs> <laughs> but isn't isn't just about every sandwich multiple layers? 
isn't just the, the, the just start. The str-